We do not employ any police officers, nor do we represent the police. We do not we employ any police officers, nor do we represent the police. We do not employ any police officers, nor do we represent the police. The fact is, Mark, what did you say? Expiration date, 3 12 There you go, sir. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll be back with your ticket. Sit tight. Sit tight. My, my name no, and my star number will be on the bottom of your Times, just, yeah. I don't think roll call. Yeah. What's the command? You know what I'm saying? Okay. He gave you his name being uh, Stephen? Is that Stephen Gregory? Is that what Stephen Gregory. Okay. Name. He told you that? No, Gregory. He just gave me Gregory. Oh, he just gave you Gregory. Okay, okay. And then you later found out on your own, yeah. you know, uh, research or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the other officers was Alvarado, which is the last name? Yeah. Alvarado is a man or a woman? It's a man. And Jersic? Yes, sir. That's a female? Man. Man as well, okay. Give me a description of these officers, because I want to, we're going to pull, you know, information, and we just want to make sure that we're correctly and positively identifying all of these officers. So let's start with, let, let, let's, if I may, let, let's start with uh, Gregory. What, what race is he? Greg, Gregory's white. Plain clothes, correct? And yeah, forties. He has a southern draw. It sounds like he's from ten, Kentucky or Tennessee. Okay. Bank, okay. Yes. How tall would you say he is? He's he's say tall, relative five, to you. Ten. How tall are you? Six foot. Okay. And how, uh, what kind of body type? Is he a thin guy, medium, heavy set? About, about average. About his average. And the colored hair, or is he bald, or what? No, he's got, he's got like, light brown hair. Okay, and what about, um... Opetisano. Say it again? Kimberly Opetisano. Opetisano. Opetisano, yeah. Okay. Uh, what like, starts off Irish and then ends Italian. So, okay. yeah, I was confused about that, too. Okay. When we were talking. So she is a... She's white, yeah. female, blonde hair, um... How tall? Husky build. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to judge girls. Um, she's probably five, seven, five, okay. eight. And how old does she appear to look to you? She's thirty-eight. Okay. Well, you know that from the yeah. research. Does she look thirty-eight to you? Yeah, she looks thirty-eight. Okay. Um, what about Alvarado? What, what, what was he? He's Hispanic. Um, how tall? Same thing. He was probably height. like five, five nine, stocky. Okay. Round face. Age range. Uh, I would say about 27. And what about the uh, Jersey? Jersey? He's big guy. He was probably like 6'2", six 6'3", six Polish. B body type? He looked, um, I'm oh, sorry, Eastern European face. Okay. I don't know that he's Polish. Um, he's muscular though. And how, how old did he appear? Like, like? He looked like he was about 24, 25. Okay. Were those the only four officers on the scene? They were. Uh, Alvarado and Jersey were they in a blue and white SUV? They were. And um, um, Gregory and the female, they were in an unmarked vehicle? What color? I believe it was gray. Okay. I mean, I have it on tape. I don't yeah. know. It was a Ford, I think. When did Alvarado and Jersic arrive on the scene? At what point during this encounter? Um, right before they, right after I gave him my ID and right after I opened, he opened my door. So was it you were already out of the vehicle? I believe I'm, I'm on my way getting out. Okay, okay. All right, um, and you were, the, the address you provided, 1220 North Pulaski, is that the address that's on the ticket as well? Yeah. Do you have the ticket with you, Ryan Chan? I believe I do. Okay, and, and um, were you in front of any business or anything like that that may have had cameras? Um, I couldn't say. Okay. This is uh, the ticket they gave me, and this is the... Um, investigator, investigative stuff. We see. Okay. Okay. Well, will you allow me to make copies of that? that of after course. Oh, okay. Um, These are the badge numbers. Okay. Investigator Whitehouse, do you have any questions? I may not have asked. This was uh, you said about three in the afternoon, something like that. Two fifty one. Two fifty one in the afternoon. And you were going or coming from where? What was your... I was picking the gentleman up to pick up, hand out my flyers. Do you have flyers in the car? I do. Were they in the back seat, trunk, or what were they? They're in the back seat. So a box? Or a box, yeah. Did they touch your flyers at all or deal with those? No, but they saw them. I mean, I could, when I watched the body camera over again, because I was mad at one point, I'm like, I pay, I pay taxes, I... Uh, have my own business. Did they ever ask you what you were doing in the area? Like, well, no. what, what, what were you doing no, around there? They didn't ask me that. Okay. 
Have you ever been arrested there in that location? No. And you indicated that they it's a drug location, you believe. Is that what you said? Well, the West Omar. Side, is, yeah. Let me just stop it here to make uh, one thing clear. Uh, I, ne I wasn't at a drug location. I never indicated it was a drug location. I said, this is the west side of Chicago. Or what I'm trying to impart is, this is the west side of Chicago. It has more open air drug markets than anywhere in the nation. Or just as many. Or it's in the running for anybody that wants to keep those stats. Which you can't keep those stats because uh, drug dealers don't pay taxes and tell you where they're selling drugs at. But anyways, a uh, block from where I'm at uh, on this route, there is, uh, let's say, a woman of the night. Well, night, day, and morning because there's someone on that corner 24-7. So that's the type of neighborhood that I'm in. No contact with you or anything like that. The car you're driving... Plates and everything are correct? And yeah. Are they registered to you or the business? To me. And you believe, or they told you they were stopping you for the reason of seatbelt? Yeah, that's what they said, yeah. Okay. And when they first saw you, they would have been on a side street? Yeah, they were perpendicular to me, whatever. And you were on Pulaski, Pulaski. How many lanes is Pulaski in the area you would have one, passed them? One lane and then parking on the right. How far would they have been from Pulaski when they were parked? The first parking spot off of Pulaski? No, I, it looked like they were. No, it looked like they were coming off the side street at the stop sign, coming onto Pulaski. Okay, so they were moving onto Pulaski. It looked like that's what they were doing. Okay. I, I think they were actually on the side, like they were parked on the side street, but it looked like they're both in the car, and it looked like they were. For, I I was given the impression I can't remember exactly why that they were leaving that side street, maybe because their wheels were turned. Which direction were you going? I was going south. So they would have been to your right? They would have been to my left. Oh, so they were on the other side of the street? Yeah. So they would have had to view you and your seatbelt through at least one full lane of traffic? Yeah. And then you drive? Yeah. What color is your seatbelt in your car? Brown. What color upper clothing were you wearing? Black. Is, uh, did Officer Gregory tell you that the reason I'm stopping you is because you, you didn't have your seatbelt on? Um, well, did he ever tell you what was the initial yeah. reason for pulling you over in the first place? Did he ever mention that? Well, yeah. He said it once he opened the door. I said, what are you doing? He's like, you need to get out of the car. I'm like, why? He's like, because you didn't have your seatbelt on. I said, well, where are you going to take it? He goes, well, I don't know what you put on your seat. You could have put a gun on your seat. Well, okay. first he asked me, what did I put on the seat? I said, I don't answer questions. That's when he opened the door. He, like, he claimed that the reason he, he, made, an, I, he made an observation that you didn't have your seatbelt on, supposedly? I don't is, know. Is he that, made that observation. I don't know who that made that observation. Or? No, he, he didn't claim he made that yeah. observation. He told me mm -hmm. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. Okay. But he did. there was no other reason given to you in terms of why they stopped you in the first place? Outside of that? Yeah. No. Okay. So your complaint is that you were stopped unjustly because you had your seatbelt on? Yeah. And then your next complaint would be that they searched your car without probable cause. Yes, sir. Because you were you were doing something, but you claim you're just taking your phone out of your pocket, and they claim they thought you were putting something under the seat. So yeah. So you at one point, I one of them said that my head disappeared from view, but he wasn't even the one that was at the stop. So, okay. but but you, I mean, you were moving a phone, but they didn't know if it was a phone or a gun or something. So they, that's probably what they're thinking, right? I don't. I don't think that's what they think. I think this was the excuse they made mm -hmm. to get into the car. I don't think they ever really pulled me off my seatbelt in the first place. I think they pulled me over because I was white in a black neighborhood. Well, Pulaski Road over there. It's a pretty big through street. Twelve hundred North Pulaski. And it's a pretty good thoroughfare. I mean, I've, I've driven through there I agree. many, many times. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else that you didn't tell us that you think we need to know? I mean, she threw the thing at me, it hit me, I, I, you could just, and once you watch the video, it's going to become clear. He by no means, he's saying one thing, that I have a gun, and he's scared I'm going to shoot him with it, but well, he didn't say you had a gun, he said you could have been. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you're right. If you had a gun, yes, right. me, you you're right, you're right, you're right, you're 100% right, thank you for correcting me on that speech. He says, he doesn't know what you were doing, what I was doing, I could have a gun underneath that seat. 
But are you saying his body language is in? It's said now because the reasonable belief not, uh, has to be that I have a gun or a weapon, and I'm yeah. going to use. Not only do I have it, I'm going to use it on him. That's the that's the that's what needs to be satisfied in order to pull me out of the car to do a cursory search of my person. He has to believe that, which has been upheld by the Supreme Court. Right? They say that doing a cursory search of your person is not intrusive enough to violate the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. The only identifications that they um, obtained from you was your driver's license? Um, or is there anything else that they that you provided to them or that they got from you? No, they, yeah, they got my insurance card. Okay, that was it? Those two items? Yeah. Okay. I don't have any further questions unless you have anything else that you wanted to add. We're going to go ahead and conclude the interview. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. to me, it's a totality of the events, right? Had yeah. this been an event on its own, it would still have been wrong. It, just, it would have been just as wrong. So you're right? saying because it's, this is but similar it, things have happened to you, yes, right? Yes, it, it constantly happens. Have they all happened in that area? In the, 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 that's the 11th well, yeah, the, the, yeah, because that's the area I go in, right? So it, it's, it, the, it's, it's generally, it yes, in, the in that district? area, yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. like, the time before that, the guy gave me two parking tickets. Like, I'm not going to yeah. go to court for a parking ticket when no one's going to be there. It's a moving violation. He's claiming that my headlights were broken and inoperable. My headlights were on in the traffic stop. This which stop is this not the front one? This is the stop oh, before that, where I have to go to court. Um, he's claiming my head, the, uh, he gave me two tickets, one for a headlight being inoperable and one for a turn signal being inoperable, which... He pulled me over. My headlights are on in the video. He says my headlights are on. He says they just weren't on on another street, which I had pulled over to make a phone call, and I turned them on and started mm -hmm. driving. So, I mean, I got that video, too. So, the, the last thing, as I mentioned, is this is sworn after David. Mm -hmm. um, take your time when you're ready. I'm going to need you to print, sign, print one more time, mm -hmm. and then today's date. Okay, so one last thing. So, sure. then the, the other stop that I have on tape is... The officer comes up to me. The first question he asks me is, "Where are the drugs?" Right? I had just come from school. I have a 3.3 GPA. I literally have a, uh, a, a paper in the car that's signed because you have to do hours for uh, physical therapy. Okay. So I had done those hours. I was actually in personal training class, so I was training uh, um, an individual, and I have to get that signed when I'm done. That I did those hours. So okay. I had had a thing. They pulled me over on. The exact same street that this, well, they pulled me over on Madison. The, sh the school's on Madison. I was literally about seven blocks from the school. You're referring to Malcolm X? Malcolm X. Okay. And, so, and, and yeah, so at th that time, first question was, where are the drugs? And at that point, I turned on my camera. He said something like, uh, you can't do that. And I said, what, the three point turn? He said, you know, that's illegal, right? I said, no, it's a three point turn legal right there. And he said, okay. And he just left. He walked away from the car. And I said, what's your name and badge number? He doesn't answer. I said, what's your name and badge number? You get the passenger to the car. I said, what's your name and badge number? And I got the camera out of the car. And he yells it over his shoulder and takes off. So these are, I mean, there's a just really Were you giving a ticket for that? No. For anything? No. No. I didn't even get my, I didn't even give it, I didn't even ask me for my license. Okay. So, and he's in complete plain clothes. He doesn't have anything. He doesn't even have the, if he had, a, if he even had a bulletproof vest on, I have no idea. Was he in a, in a police car? No, he was in an unmarked car. Well, I mean, was it an unmarked police car? I mean, I couldn't see, I didn't take the time to see the plates, but, yeah. you know. But, yeah, I mean, yes, I want to say it was municipal. Was it, was it the, the, you know, the usual, they usually drive the SUVs? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, or yeah, yeah. Or yeah so it was was it one of those? Yeah, it was that type of car. They used by himself? He was by himself, yes, no, yeah, no, so. I mean, that's a, that would be a totally separate, um, No, yeah, I understand. I'm just trying to tell you the yeah. totality. No, no, I, I think. things to get me to the point where I'm at. Where you're at, these making this You know what I'm saying? Like you're yeah. upset, you're, I yeah, yeah. If, had this been the first incident, okay. an isolated incident, yeah. I might have took it on the chin and been like, you know what? Yeah. I might not have, though. Who knows? It's right. just that I can't. No, I see, what, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Not to mention the, the girl, the lady I saw in there, she works the desk at the 25th District. Somebody hit my car when I was driving. Now think about this for coincidence. This is Officer Spain. She's from the Disorderly Product News Origins video. I came in a victim. I left Disorderly Product News. Um, she refused to take my report. 
after I was uh, the victim of a hit and run. And then when she ultimately was told to take the report by the desk sergeant, um, she completely put all the wrong information on there. Not only that, she gave me a wrong case number. It had too many numbers in it, so I could never find the report online. Um, she was at COPA headquarters that day dressed as a security guard. Now, she wasn't at a post. She was coming in COPA headquarters while I was going back to my car to get my ID um, to get through security. So why that's important is this is the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. You can't say you don't have police officers if the desk officer is working security there. And again, she could have been there to give an affidavit on another case she's involved in. She could have been there for that. But there's a real possibility that uh, the desk officer from the 25th District works security at the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. We already know that Joel Whitehouse, the gentleman I'm sitting across from, and we already know from the beginning of the video that Joel Whitehouse, the gentleman sitting directly across from me, was an assistant Cook County State's attorney for nine years. He prosecuted over 500 cases. And he highlighted his relationship with law enforcement, prosecutors, and judges. Those are his words. Somebody hit my car when I was dropping the kids off. Okay. And they took off. I stopped the police officer. They said they're busy. Go to... Go to the other, the other police the station that's over there. Um, Grand Central? No, no. Um, the other one's west on the other, by the 290. Uh, Kenzie and Harrison. Okay. So, yeah, so okay. I called them. They told me to go to Grand Central. I went to Grand Central. She started making a report. I said, you're not going to tell my insurance company. She says, no. I said, good, because I'm not either. She said, well, I'm not ready to report them. And that's how that happened. Not yet. So you made a complaint against this officer? Was she, well, she refused that. to make a report. Then she... Then she made a report, and she didn't put any of the details. She put the wrong side of my car, the wrong street, the wrong... I, she said I hit my head when I hit my back. You know what I'm saying? And right. she didn't put any of the identifying details. So you made a complaint started. against her, and it went to internal affairs? Yeah, it went to... Because she gave me the wrong... Yeah. And she gave me the wrong yeah. uh, case number, okay. file number. Okay. Like, every single officer I showed it to, they like, has got too many numbers, they can't be it. Yeah. So... Yeah. The, 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 also, what I'm saying is the totality of these events. Right. No, Even I mean, when I'm the victim, I'm treated like. No, I, 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 I get what you're saying. Uh, it's you're, just pervasive in the department you're, you're, where they just disappointed. They, they don't have yeah. respect for citizens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, that's par for the course with the DOJ. You know. Yeah. DOJ, Department of Justice, a federal agency who has the role of making sure law enforcement agencies are upholding the Constitution. They audited CPD and came back with a scathing report in 2017, which ultimately resulted in the federal consent decree. It's not anything outside of what the DOJ themselves said. Okay. So, yeah. That, that, I mean, that, yeah, that's it as far as, I mean, that's the whole. Any of these events that you told us about, were you, were you always alone when they happened? Yeah. yeah. So the kids weren't in the car? Well, the, yeah, oh, well no, the kids were there when I got hit. Okay, they weren't now, in the car. Now they it's your contact, or alleged like contact with the police, though. When you claim that all these incidents are happening, the, the kids aren't in the car. The kids were not in the oh. car. And when I say kids, they're not kids. I'm, they're yeah. 18 or 19 years old. I'm, I'm older. I yeah, I know. I so am I. Yeah. So am I. But I just don't want to think that I'm picking up like 70, right? I, you would, they're like 18, 19, 21 yeah, I, year old kids. I call them kids because I'm 38. Um, no, they, when the accident happened, they were right next to me, uh, outside the car. I was exiting the car, and uh, I chased the guy. So, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I kind of think that's what it is. It's a, it's a white guy driving by himself in a neighbor in an older model car. I mean, I don't know what else I'm doing to attract so much attention from a narcotics officer, you know, unless everybody's getting pulled over like this. For minor traffic we'll look, we'll look into it. Do we have a copy of your driver's license? Uh, I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since you've been with Investigator Nufio and Investigator Whitehouse, we always ask, how does everybody treat you here at COPA? Oh, you did. You guys were professional. That's professional. I mean, yes. Yeah. We have a lot of questions because 
we don't want to bring you back down on another date and give you. No, no, you guys, you guys were extremely so professional. Extreme. You listened to me. I mean, I kind of got a feeling of your ideas about it just by body language and stuff. But no, no, we, you. We, I mean, that's your opinion. We ask because. We've dealt with officers. We have an idea of what usually they see. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's always yeah. You know, no, I know. There's two, two sides, sides to every. There's two sides to every point. I understand that. Yeah. And it and it, it, I trust me. That's not lost on me. I, I weigh every right. thing. You know. And I even told like I told you to do a cursory search my person. I wasn't upset about that. I understand the Supreme Court has upheld that. Now her going in my car is just unacceptable. It's unacceptable. It just can't happen. You know. She has no right to cross that threshold. Former assistant Cook County State's Attorney and private detective Joel Whitehouse just looked at his phone and said, I got 250. The clock is pretty right for once. By the time I get done signing that affidavit, how much you want to bet it's 251? What time was the traffic stop at? 251. I don't know. I'm just presenting the facts. Now, pin one more time. Yeah, I mean, my, my mouth started going dry right, right in it. The, the whole key is uh, that you affirm or state that everything you just told us is true and accurate to the best of your knowledge and ability. Oh, 100%. And that's why that's what we do that. Oh, that's the incident date. Today's the 6th, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This uh, now concludes the audio and video recording. What's going on, guys? I hope you enjoyed episode two of what happened after the video, the viral seatbelt stop. Now, we have to go on over to Disorderly Product News presents the Caparazzi. It's a new channel. We're putting uh, YT Jail here on this channel. So, got to start anew. This channel will still be open, but I'll be putting a lot of my main content over there. I'll be sharing just so I can make a smooth transition, be posting on both channels. But the plan will be eventually to go over there. Next up, a seatbelt stop performed by Gregory and Opetasano leads to the incarceration of Emlo, the activist family member for a high-profile crime. Good night.